Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending today's webinar on Replacing Management Reporter with Excel. Um, first, I'd just like to go over a few housekeeping items. My name is Bailey Springs, and I am with LBMC Technology Solutions. We also have your presenters, Marvin Crossnow and Phil Johnson, here with us today from Inquitive. Um, if you have any questions throughout this webinar, please submit them in the chat box, and we will answer all of them at the very end. And I also want to let you know that this webinar will be recorded, and we will make sure to send out the recording link to everyone after the webinar is completed. Um, with that, I will let Marvin take it away. OK, thank you, Bailey. And thank you, everyone, for attending today in these uh, very different times. So I'm Marvin Crossnow, and I work with Intuitive. And today, I'm going to be presenting Active Reporter as a replacement for Management Reporter. So just to get started, I'm going to tell you a little bit about our company, Intuitive. Uh, we've been in the accounting-related software business for over 45 years. The, the, the technology that you're going to see today, Active Reporter, has been under development for about 15 years. But in uh, 2016, when Microsoft announced that they were no longer going to develop Management Reporter, we decided we could use our expertise to bring a lot of value, especially in Excel-based reporting, to the Dynamics GP community. So we started developing that and introduced it at GPUG 2017, a little over two and a half years ago. So what I want to emphasize is that the product you're seeing today is not a new product. The only thing that's new about it is the interface to Dynamics GP. And I think you'll see that in the maturity of the product. So as as uh, we said, the primary thing that we're going to show today is our Excel-based financial reporting to replace Dynamics uh, Management Reporter. Just a little bit of history. Uh, from a historical standpoint, many of us produced report writers, financial report writers, using some sort of product like Management Reporter. But the product that I'm going to show you today is very different. It is pure Excel. If you're used to using Excel, it has the full power of Excel. It is not an application built on top of Excel. You can, with management report, with the Active Reporter uh, product, you can have pivot tables, you can have external spreadsheet references. Anything that you can do in Excel, you can do with our product. What we've done is we've added over 50 functions to the, to the Excel product. And these functions look into the Dynamics GP database. And some of the example functions are activity and balance and year-to-date, debit activity, credit activity, and so forth. But for any one of those numerical numbers, you are able to drill down to the underlying detail and then drill back to Dynamics GP. We also can make the transition from Management Reporter to Active Reporter easy because we can select and harvest the row definitions from Management Reporter and put them into Active Reporter. And you can, you can use those to present a almost finished financial statement with very little effort. We will show that to you here in a few minutes. And also, we have unlimited designs. You can have as many Excel spreadsheets as you want. Not only can you do financial reporting like balance sheets, income statements, cash flow statements, but you can also do ad hoc reporting. Anything that you need to report from your Dynamics GP data and select data out of the general ledger and put it onto a spreadsheet you can do with Active Reporter. And the word active in Active Reporter has special connotation, and we will show that to you in the demonstration. So to begin with, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the conclusion. We're going to show you what happens after you get a fully functional Excel spreadsheet built. And then after we show you that, we're going to go back or go into the Active Reporter application itself and then show you how to build these workbooks, show you how easy it is to build the workbooks. So now we're going to put away the presentation, and we're going to go into the application and take a look at it. First of all, before I actually open the Active Reporter application, I'm going to open a spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet is here on the desktop. It's in the Windows file system. And when I open the spreadsheet, 
you'll notice it has a lot of errors connected to it because I'm not connected to the database. So Activity, ActiveHD, has a ribbon embedded in Excel. And so the very first thing I need to do is connect to the database. And once I connect to the database, then all the underlying uh, errors will go away. So I've connected to the database, giving it a, given it a period in time. It brought in the name of the company. It brought in the dates. It brought in all of the descriptions. It brought in all of the numerical, numerical information. But what's unique about it is that for any number on here, like the 223,000, I can drill down to the underlying detail. And from any of that detail, there's, if you'll notice here, there's down in the bottom left-hand corner, 1,785 entries that make up this underlying detail. And for any one of those items, I can, with a single keystroke, drill back into Dynamics GP. So here's that $567.58 back in Dynamics GP. And of course, once you get into Dynamics GP, you can trace that back further to the source documents in Dynamics GP. So this is the final result. We have a spreadsheet that we built. We hooked it up to the database. And once it's hooked up to the database, it renders with all of the numbers and descriptions and company name and everything. Now just to show you the kinds of statements that we can produce, this is a balance sheet here that we're showing on the screen at the present time. But we can also do things like income statements compared to budgets. We can put graphs on here because this is an Excel spreadsheet. We can use the graphing capabilities of Excel. We can do cash flow statements. We can do income statement year over year over year over year. We can do multi-company analysis. These are we can do multi-company analysis regardless of whether you, you're, you're using separate databases or you're using a segment of the chart of accounts to delineate the company segment or any combination thereof. And we can also produce very sophisticated financials with all kinds of graphics and embedded uh, information that you can use for your reporting to your board of directors or something like that. But for any number on here, you can drill down or you can drill down to the underlying transactions and then from those transactions drill back to Dynamics GP with a with a single keystroke so here's that same transaction back in Dynamics GP okay so just a little bit of uh, of uh, housekeeping work here we'll go back and look at this balance sheet we'll take a number here but let's look at the numbers that are represented. As we showed you a few minutes ago, there's a total of 982 entries that make up this $2 million. We can sort this by account. We can sort this by date. We can sort this by debits. We can sort this by credits. So we have a lot of ways that you can look at that underlying detail. We can also say, I want to limit this just to the payroll journal. And there are no payroll entries there. Or we could limit it just to the sales journal. And here's everything that came out of the sales journal. Or we could limit it just to a single account or uh, like 1205, like uh, 1205 here. So those are all of the postings that go into that single account. So once we have a number on a spreadsheet, then we can look at it in detail and we can do a lot of work in it in this detail before we drill back. To Dynamics GP. So now that we've seen the final result, a spreadsheet with all of our numbers on it that we can drill down and drill back on, I want to go into the application itself and let's take a let's take a look at the application for a minute before we go back and show you how easy it is to build one of those spreadsheets. So in my demo today I have over in the left hand column called the navigation column I have five different companies. I have Fabricam, Gabricam, Habricam, Mabricam, and University. University is a large data set with over three million transactions. And we'll show that to you here in a few minutes to show you how the speed that you get with large amounts of transactions. But to start with, I'm going to start with Fabricam. And I'm going to open the Active Reporter system in Fabricam. 
Now the first thing that I want to show you before we get into the spreadsheets is that we have visibility into a lot of the data. So here is the complete chart of accounts in Fabricam. Down in the left-hand corner, you'll see there's 503 accounts. A product like Management Reporter has the chart of accounts in it, but you don't have the visualization capability that you do in Active Reporter. Also, we can look at all the journal entries. And in this case, there's 3,360. And we've rendered those in just less than one second. We can drill down or we can look uh, we can uh, scroll all the way down through them, but let's look at something that's even more challenging, and let's look at all the single-legged entries, the journal detail. In this case, down at the bottom left-hand corner, we see there are almost 60,000 entries, and we rendered those in less than one second. If we did that in something like Smart List, we're going to be looking at minutes in order to get all of those on the screen. And for any of the information that's on this screen, we can, with a single keystroke, drill back to that same data in Dynamics GP. So not only do we produce spreadsheets with financial information on it, but we also have visibility, and we can do smart list-like applications directly in Active Reporter in addition to what you can do with smart list in Dynamics GP. But the main thing that we want to show, of course, is the financial designs in Excel. So I'm going to go into the financial designs, and you'll see a lot of designs on the right-hand screen. We call this right-hand screen the high-definition screen because it presents, it, it presents a lot of detail to you, and it presents it very rapidly, as you saw in the journal detail, a very rapid rendition of 60,000 accounts. But here are our financial designs. Now, a few minutes ago, to show you the result, I opened a, a financial design from the desktop. So this is in the Windows file system. But we like for people to store their financial designs in the application itself. And so here are the financial designs that we have in Dynamics, in uh, Active Reporter. And we can look at that same spreadsheet that we opened a few minutes ago, and we can open it in the Active Reporter application itself. And so I'm going to open this, and I can open this workbook, and it's exactly the same workbook that I had that I stored on my desktop. I give my login information. I give it a date so that I'll have a date for the numeric numbers on the spreadsheet below. And again, I can still drill down because this is just Excel. Just because I'm storing it in the database, that doesn't mean it's not real Excel. It is just Excel, and I can drill down to the underlying detail, and I can drill back to Dynamics GP. But if I store the if I store the um, spreadsheet in Excel in the in the database, I have a lot of advantages. One of the big advantages is that I have all of the historical renditions of this spreadsheet saved. So if I want to go to the one that I did last October the 24th, I can restore that version and work on it. Or I can restore the version I worked on yesterday without going to backup in case and I want to return to an earlier version. So by storing the data, by storing these spreadsheets inside the database, I have a lot of advantages. Now as advertised, we're going to create a new spreadsheet starting from scratch. So in starting from scratch, I will just go down here and I'll say I want a new container for this spreadsheet. And I'm going to call this container Interdyne. Inter Interdyne Financial. Interdyne, Interdyne Financials. And I'm going to open the workbook. And this is opening a brand new workbook with the Excel that's installed on this machine. And here I have a blank spreadsheet, but I do need to give it a date. I need to give it a period so that the numbers in the spreadsheet that I'm going to create will have a numeric or a date reference. Now, this is just a blank spreadsheet. But what we've done in Active Reporter is that we've added a lot of financial functions, and they're available here under the Activity HD ribbon. And so you see that we have financial functions of activity, balance, beginning balance, and so forth. We have, segment, we have segment items that allow us to pull in descriptions. We have individual account items that pull in the accounts and descriptions. We have 
period information that brings in the period, and we have company information that brings in the company. So the very first thing I'm going to do is go up here into E1 and put in the company name. So I could type in Fabricam, and that would just be a literal, but if I am using this for multiple companies, I want the system itself to provide the name Fabricam. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to use the function, and indeed it pulls in the name Fabricam. And since it's just Excel, I can go make this bold, I can make it red, I can increase the size, I can do anything that I want to it because it's just Excel with added function. Now below that, I want to put in the time period. So I'm going to go back to the ribbon, I'm going to go back to the period, and I'm going to say this is a balance sheet as of period ending, and that pulls in April 30th of 2017. Because when I first went into this spreadsheet, I told it I want to be, op I want to be operating in April of 2017. If I change that to May of 2017, then immediately this will change to May of 2017. Now, in a typical balance sheet, I would want to go over here to the left and put some sort of an account or group of accounts and, and have the name of that account or group of accounts. Well, I'm going to start with single accounts, more like a trial balance. So I'm going to go here to the account, and I'm going to put in the account description. And the description of the account that I want is 000-1100-00-A. Now, we have added this dash A to the end of the chart of account. It has special connotation, and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes. But as soon as I do that, I have the cash operating account. Now, I want the balance of that cash operating account over here in G5. I could go to my financial functions and put in the balance. But just to show you that this is totally integrated with Excel, I'm going to go to my function arguments wizard that's built into Excel. And I'm going to go to not the standard functions, but I'm going to go down here and look at the activity financial function. And we see the balance function is here just like it is up in the ribbon and I can call for it here. To begin with, I'm not going to put any parameters into the function arguments. I'm just going to leave them all blank. And you'll notice that I have $131 million represented. I'm sure in the audience I have some accountants. And if I add up all my debits and all my credits as of May 31st, 2017, I should have zero. I do not have zero, so I can drill down and take a look and see why I don't have zero. Well, I've got 35,000 postings in the Dynamics GP database that add up to that number, 131 million. And if I want to look down through it, I see that, uh-oh, I have dash B entries. The dash B entries are the budget entries, and they do not have to be in balance. Your budget postings or your budget entries do not have to be in balance. So on the function arguments wizard, I can go back in here, and I can say I do not want anything except the ledger equal to A. The A ledger is your actual ledger. That's your real postings, not your unit of postings and not your budget postings, but all of the actual postings to your live chart of account, your live system. And when I do so, I do have zero as the representation, and I can check that. So now I can also drill back, and now I have seven. I have uh, 16,955 entries, but I see that there's some problem because I just want the account 1,100. I don't want all of these other accounts. So somehow I have to limit the func I have to limit this function to just the account 000-1100-A, and I can do that here by putting something in like gl.account is equal to 000-1100-00-A. And once I do that, I have 1,118,000, and indeed I can drill down on that and see I can sort by ascending and descending order in the account number, and I see that every account here, or I could use the elevator bar to look at them, every account is the 00-1100-A. So indeed I do have the balance of the cash operating account in G5. Well, I could continue here. I could put the, uh, some additional accounts and I could put additional balances. This would be more like building a trial balance because I'm representing every account in the chart of accounts. 
Well, this is the hard way to put together a financial, but I wanted to show you this first so you see the versatility. But now let's go to another sheet on this spreadsheet, and let's use some of the easier ways. I can go back into the Activity HD ribbon, and I can use something we call a layout wizard. And in the layout wizard, I want to build a, a balance sheet of current versus prior year. Here I can go into my account, just like I did a few minutes ago, or I can go into the categories, which are natural classifications from Dynamics GP. And now when this finishes, it builds me a financial. And this financial is practically complete. The only thing I need to do is maybe go in and put some decoration on it and put in some literals. I can split, I can split apart some rows and put in some subtotals and things like that. But essentially, this financial is a complete financial. It just needs some lipstick. Now, you'll notice that on the left three columns in the top three rows, I typically have something that look like reserved rows. But remember over here in this spreadsheet, I had no reserved rows. The items that look like reserved rows in this sheet number two are not reserved. All this is is taking the advantage of indirect referencing for, from Excel. So the reason I put these, this information up here is because Excel can read this information and I can quickly build financial statements. For example, if I want the current minus two years over here in J, I can copy this row and I can insert it over here in J. I can insert these copied cells. And now this, if I change this from current minus one year to current minus two years, I can get the 2015 over here. And everything followed through. And indeed, I can check it. I can check this balance and I'll see by inverse sorting it. The latest date is May of 2015. And I can, get, I, can, um, I can also look at budgets just by changing this one letter from an A to a B. And now all of these numbers down here are the budget entries. So emphasizing again, everything up here in the green area is not a function of Active Reporter. It is a function of Excel and indirect referencing. Now, the title of this presentation is How Do We Convert from Management Reporter to Active Reporter? So I'm going to put this away, and I'm going into the designer for Management Reporter. This is a design. These are row definitions from Management Reporter. And the hard thing about Management Reporter is putting together all of these row definitions. So I want to take this row definition and move it over to Active Reporter. In Active Reporter, we call those roll-ups. And I can extract those row definitions from Management Reporter with a program that we've written that looks into the Management Reporter database. And this number one up here is this spreadsheet, is this balance sheet row definition. So I'm going to use number one. I can give it any name that I want to. I'll leave the name synonymous with that in Active Reporter. You'll notice it came up back here in the background. And now I'm going to activate that. And as soon as I activate it, I can use it in Active Reporter. But just to show you what it did, I'm going to go into this balance sheet. I'm going to look at this row code 130. And then I'm going to compare that to the one in the background here for Management Reporter. So row 130 has everything from 1100 to 1130 in it, and so does our code 130 over here. And so if I look at the next code, it's 1140, which is what we have over here. And if I look at the next row, we have everything that begins with a 1-2, which is what I have over here in Active Reporter. Now we'll go back into our spreadsheet. So this is the spreadsheet. Um, not that one. I want to go into my other spreadsheet, this new financial design. And I'm going to bring that, um, uh, OK, I do not want my financial design, which is right here. So now I'm going to go into another sheet. And I'm going to my layout wizard, balance sheet current versus prior year. And now I'm going to use that extracted row definition from Management Reporter, which is this balance sheet. I'm going to say OK. And it will generate me a balance sheet, which is synonymous with the one that is over here in Management Reporter. 
The only thing this needs is it needs the decoration. And we might need to change some of the column information because we do not extract that column. We only extract a reporter. But I think you see that within just a few minutes, I can go from management reporter to active reporter. I need to put a little lipstick on this to make it look nice like the management reporter report, and then I'm essentially through. So I can save this, and I can save my financial design, and you'll notice that I have the version created at 125, and as soon as I do that, then next month I can come back into the financial designs, look at this financial design, which is Interdine Financials, and I can open the workbook again, It'll still be there from the, the prior month. I can give it a June date, and as soon as I give it a June date, then this will be presented for June of 2017 and June of 2016. So that shows how I can go from management reporter to active reporter in just a few minutes. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you uh, on the product. There's a lot more to the product but I want to show you something that you'll use every day in your account analysis. So I'm going to go into something we call financial views, and I'm going to go into the trial balance. This is a trial balance in April of 2017 of the Fabricam data. And what's interesting about this is that this is not a static trial balance like you see in, like, like you see in, um, I wanted this the actual ledger, not the budget ledger. This is not a static trial balance like you see in Dynamics GP, but this is something that I can use. I can look at any number on here. If I want a detail of that 222,000, I can see the detail of that 20, 222,000, and now I can drill back into Dynamics GP, and I can see that data back in Dynamics GP, and it was under, underneath that uh, management reporter um, design. Okay, so here's that 230 dollars and 05 cents in Dynamics GP. So every day that you're working and want to do account research, you can do it in Active Reporter rather than in Dynamics GP and it's much more efficient. And it's very, very fast. I'm going to go down into the university data set and I'm going to show you the same thing when you have millions of transactions. So I'm going to open up Active Reporter in the data set here, I'm going to go into financial designs, I'm going to go into a trial balance, and now this is a trial balance for 2016 period 9. There are no pre-stored totals. Every number on here was calculated as I brought this up. If I want to go to a different period, I can go to April of 2016. So down in the bottom left-hand corner, there's nearly 11,000 accounts in that chart of accounts. If I want to discover something about this thousand and a million fifty nine thousand dollars. Here are all the postings for the million fifty nine thousand, and I can take any one of those and drill it back into Dynamics GP. And here's something even more impressive because I can look at the trial balance by month by account. So I'm going to make this full screen. This is every single month during the year for the period 2017, uh, period two. And for any number on here, I can drill down to the underlying detail and drill back to Dynamics GP. So that 114,000 or that 59,000 or that 100,000 or that 160,000, all of those numbers are drill backable into Dynamics GP. Now just a little bit more, uh, there's a lot more to the product, but we want to reserve uh, time for a couple of questions at the end. So I'm going to go back into the PowerPoint uh, and look at uh, a couple more items of interest. One is that how much does the product cost? The product is $1,000 for the initial implementation. This is a one-time fee, and that is for a single license. And what does that single license include? It includes up to 10 company databases. If you're using a product like MEM and you're using segments in the chart of accounts to represent different companies, that does not count against your 10 companies. We have unlimited users. There's no limit to the number of users you can use, so you can have an active reporter installation for your CEO or for your department heads and produce those kinds of reports. It includes installation assistance and up to four hours of training. 
And then there's an additional fee of $70 per month per license fee. And the examples down here say if you have 5 DGP databases, you need one license. If you have 12 GP databases, you need two licenses. So uh, that is uh, the product in a very fast, uh, fast-paced um, presentation. If you want to purchase the product, you can go to our website and purchase the product, you'll be sent something called a statement of work. That statement of work can be completed. We'll issue the license. We'll uh, contact you. We'll get, help you download it from the website and schedule the installation and training. And if you want a, another presentation of what you've seen today, if you want to go to this YouTube video, you can see a presentation of the product uh, in a YouTube video. And now I want to turn it back over to uh, to Bailey uh, for any questions that you might have uh, during the uh, presentation. Bailey, do you have any? Um, thank you, Marvin. We actually do not have any questions at this time, um, but thank you for that presentation. And thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar today. Um, if anyone does have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Chelsea, Ashley, or Lisa.